Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, uh, continue to call on God. That doesn't mean you're not going to get sick. That doesn't mean that everything's going to go perfect for you. <coughs> if you can hear my voice a little bit, I feel like I'm a little under the weather. But the thing is, God sustains you through illnesses. Don't stop calling on them. Keep calling on them, no matter what's going on. Let's put it this way. I feel better than I felt Friday today. It's all by the will of God and trusting in Him. You understand? Hey, people, develop that personal relationship with Him. You're going to find yourself going to less doctors, depending on less things to make you feel better. But let's put it this way. God will let you know exactly what to do for every situation in your life. Ain't that amazing? That you got somebody that's going to guide you and know your body better than yourself, better than the doctors do. Ain't that amazing? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remember, put your cross on, people. Today I'm going to read from 1 Kings chapter 17. This is like the introduction to Elijah. I asked, often ask myself, why didn't Elijah get a book by itself? But he's in the book. But Elijah is a very important character in the Old Testament. All of them are important. But he's important too. Because he shows things that weren't been shown in the Old Testament as much. I'm going to start with 17. If God wants me to keep reading, I'm going to read to 18. Let's see. 1 Kings chapter 17. Sound like I hear somebody arguing, but well, it's all right. God bless his soul. Mm -hmm. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, <coughs> there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. One thing you got to understand is. Elijah is working, God is working through Elijah. So who's really stopping the rain? Who's stopping the rain? God. As the Lord God of Israel liveth. Think about it. If, as he, if you ask anything according to his will, he will do it. So if it's God's will to do this, this, that. As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, if you go to the, the New Testament, he'll be like, Elijah was a man of like passions as us. And he prayed that it wouldn't rain on the earth for three space years. And it didn't. And then he prayed again and it rained. You see, you got to know the stories of old to even truly understand the New Testament. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. One thing you got to understand also, if God tells you to do something, that he's going to provide for you when he tells you to do something. Check this out. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. What? Boy, that's the move on waiting on right here. Elijah. The story of Elijah. Elijah's story got so much great. It's action packed. It's down packed. It's got some compassion. It's got healing in it. It's got a little fear in it. It's got everything in it. But look at that. The ravens. You see, we often we would worry about everything as a human being. We're so used to providing for ourselves, me included. Lord, what am I going to do? All I got is this much money this week. God's like, I've just, I fed Elijah with ravens. I fed him with ravens. You think I can't take care of you? You think I don't know what's going on in your life? Hmm. But look at the, the obedience part. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook. Cherith, that is before Jordan. So remember that obedience. Each individual has different commands. To go by for God. He said he went and did. You see, what's the problem is that while a lot of our faiths ain't strengthened, 
God's like, hey, go over there. But I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't got nothing with me. All right. So you're never going to see how I work. As you steady or disobedient. A lot of times we are worried about what our own hands can do and how we can provide for oneself. And this is a grave error that we often, as human beings, commit against the Lord. Hey, do that. Why? Okay, don't do it then. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. Now think about this. They didn't say what type of flesh it was. And you know what? The raven is a what? What kind of bird is a raven? You're not supposed to eat it. It's a defiled bird. Mm -hmm. And a defiled bird brought him food. How many of y'all today would eat something like that and be like, what? Oh, no. A bird? <laughs> I got jokes this morning. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Another thing I just learned by that, two meals a day, mm -hmm. breakfast and dinner. <laughs> and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now check this out. You remember the New Testament? He's like, whatever house you go to, go to, if my peace be there, remain in such house, eating such things that are set before you, asking no question. But if my peace be not there, leave from that house or that city, shaking in the dust. That's on your feet against them as a testament against them. Now check this out. What did he say? He never knew this woman, but he knew she loved him. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Hmm. Let's give you another subject. When a woman sustains a man, the spies, Rahab the harlot. So guess what? The same way. God's peace was in Rahab the harlot, since you got to be a perfect woman <laughs> to serve God, like half of these people be preaching. Her peace was, God's peace was in Rahab in order to keep the spies safe. God got people in your life that are designed to assist you. Mm. Guess what? Just because he got he got people designed to assist you, but he get, the devil got people designed to try to destroy you. But you got to remember what the word says: no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now check this out. So he arose and went to Zephyr. What did he do? He was obedient. Y'all don't see the obedience here. So he arose and went to Zephyr and went. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was gathering of sticks. Wow. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. Now, this goes back to the New Testament again. Be careful to entertain strangers. By doing so, you might be entertaining angels unaware. And then also he said, if you did it to the least of them, you did it to me. Right? In another scripture. And as he was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. She didn't ask no question. But guess what? God had already touched her heart. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake. The Lord will provide. But a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. God had another plan. And Elijah said to her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. How many people are willing to do that? Just feed a random stranger before you even feed your household. Well, if God's in your heart, you would do things like that. <laughs> 
For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Not your will, but my will be done. I mean, not my will, but your will be done. What did he say? For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Not to say the crews of all fail until the day that the Lord sent of rain upon the earth. Wow, just imagine having a thing of meal that got this much in it. And no matter how much you get, it lasts for three years. Wow. Amazing. A lot of people don't want to see the miracles of the Old Testament. Why do you think the Bible talks about Elijah becoming before the Son of God, paving the way? Mm -hmm. Why was Elijah such an important figure in the Bible? That he was the one going to pave the way in the wilderness, which is in the form of John. It wasn't, it, anyway, now that's a whole nother story. I'm about to go there, but I'm not going to go there today. Now remember obedience. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of all fail until the day that the Lord sent us rain upon the earth. And what did she do? And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of all fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and the sickness was sore. There was no breath left in him. Now think about how all things work together for those who believe and love God. The widow woman believed God. Then she helped a random stranger. And she led him in his house. And she fed him. Not knowing that this, this random stranger was endowed with the power of the God, the Holy Spirit, in order to heal her son. God knows what's going to happen before it happens. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And the sickness was sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have I have to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou coming to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Now she thinking she's getting punished for her sins. Oh, God has come to reward her hmm, for helping a man of God. I told you the word of God applied to everybody. I will bless him that blesses thee. I will curse them that curse of thee. And that goes for every Christian that lives. That's why God doesn't want us to curse, but bless. She wasn't a perfect woman. Look what she said. Hold on, man. I thought it come to me call my sin to remembrance. And he said to her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord. Faith without works is dead. That, didn't, that wasn't in the scripture. It just came up like that. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord. Hmm. Did he put some all? He trusted him. He had faith. Well, a lot of people don't understand why Elijah, Elijah was able to do so many. God was able to do so many great works through Elijah. Because Elijah had a faith like no other. <laughs> and the Lord said, oh Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. <clears throat> One of the first stories of somebody being brought back from the dead. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Revive us, Lord Jesus. And Elijah took the child and brought him down in the chamber to the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. Don't you want to get a faith so strong that one time you're going to be like, See? <laughs> See? See what the Lord can do? See? He have came to open the eyes of the blind and set the captives free. This has been going on since the beginning. Now, this is just one story. But let's just imagine, I'm sure Elijah's whole life story is not in here. Don't tell him what else he did. Don't tell him what else God did through people. But a lot of y'all don't like the Old Testament. I just don't understand. I love it. 
shows me so much. And the woman said to Elijah, now one thing you can understand, if you're a child of God, a lot of things you're going to say, whether you believe it or not, or know it or not, it's going to come to pass because it's going to be God talking to you. A lot of things that you do are going to come to pass because God's trying to strengthen your faith and the person that you may be ministering to. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man of God. And that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. God is what? The father of truth, people. Oh, that was great that God gave me that this morning. Through my sickness and pain and you know, because I remember yesterday, I was just stressed. I was like, man, I was about ready to tell my wife, I might not be able to make it to work tomorrow. But some was like, don't say nothing. Tomorrow ain't even here yet. And I got up this morning feeling better. Yeah, I'm still coughing. My voice still sounds horrible. But I feel so much better than I felt the days before. Because one thing you're going to understand about God, if God tells you to do something, or tells you that everything is going to be okay. In some way, it's going to be okay. You got to understand what I'm saying. It may not become the way you think. But think about it. That woman was already susceptible to the Spirit of God. So this is the thing. She had to have faith. That to believe that God, through Elijah, would heal her son. So show me your faith without your works. And look at the work that was done on both sides. Elijah had to be faithful. And guess what? The widow had to be faithful too. And what he said, when two are joined together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. So you had two that had faith that could move mountains. In this case, restore a son to life. I tell people all the time, you got to be careful who pray for you. Some people ain't got faith. Can I tell you a story years that happened years ago? Me and my wife were living in another town when we first met. We was living in not too far from here. But uh, she found out about a friend that was in the hospital in a coma. Her family members and everybody that counted us as dead. She's finna die. Let's make the arrangements. That's understandable. But one thing about faith, you never judge something before it's time. Let's make arrangements for his death, for her death. And my wife was like, I feel God wants me to go to the hospital. I'm like, okay, let's go. You understand? So we go in there, we meet the family at first. And all the family, all you hear is negative talk. She's dead. <coughs> She's finna die. Right? So the, the Lord, and, and the thing is, he didn't put it on my heart, put it on my wife's heart. Let's go in there and pray for her. Then my wife told me, let's go pray for her. And I'm not saying I'm nothing. I'm nothing. All this, it's all about obedience. But God can show anything to anybody. But anyway, so we go in there and we made sure nobody else, because me and her were talking, we was like, dog, she already dead, according to them. I remember we was having this conversation, and we've been reading the Bible about things and stu stuff, and seeing how doubt and all that, and we were just seeing so much of a doubtful heart from the people. But we did exactly what God told us to do, and I'm sure we weren't the only people to pray for him, but you got to think about it. If you know God and you love God, you're going to see him work. Now, nobody else probably couldn't even see what we saw, but she was in a coma. All right. So we got finished praying. We went out there and stood with the, uh, the family. It was like, everything's going to work out fine. Exactly how God willed it. Somewhere along those type of conversations, we left. Probably a day or a night later, she woke up from a coma. She woke up from her coma. Let me say that again. She woke up from her coma. Let me pause and I will continue.